the media intelligence is essentially examining human behaviour online. So it's looking at what people say and what they do and, and putting that into something that's useful for, for people that want that. So whether that be governments or whether that be businesses, etc. That's really what social media intelligence is. Right. So there are lots of different ways that you can measure the value, the digital value of a particular country. And one of the most important ways you can do that is by looking at the nation branding index or look at the ways in which a nation brands itself online. You can do this by, for example, looking at the way, the different ways in which people interact with different countries online, their different experiences, um, etc. So you can look at what people how people talk about being in a certain country when they go for trips or etc. You can look at the ways in which people talk about different countries policies in the news um, or things like that. You can even look at the ways in which people interact with different countries digital properties like their, their Facebook pages, their their MySpace pages, even their blogs, etc. You can you can glean information from that. It's really, really important to be able to do this because in the past, countries would have relied on things like surveys and questionnaires to have been able to get this intelligence. And it would have taken a really long time and it would have been very expensive to have done this. Now in the digital age, all of this data is just, it's there. It's, it's, it's available and you can get this information and analyze it very quickly and much more cheaply than you could have done before. Um, and so that means that A, com sorry, governments don't have to spend as much, um, governments don't have to wait as long, and more often than not, the type of information that people give away online is much closer to what they actually feel than if it was, if they were simply responding to a questionnaire, which in general people give the answer that they, that they would like to have given rather than what they actually feel. From a nation branding perspective, it's really interesting to look at different countries and the way that they attain influence online. And one of the trends that we're, find, that we're understanding more and more is that cities take much greater precedence than countries online. So for example, Spain, as a country online doesn't have an amazing reputation and that's probably because of its performance in the financial crisis, um, because of the unemployed levels of unemployment, um, maybe even because of the political party in power at the moment. However, cities like Barcelona, for example, have and have had for a really long time this incredible reputation online and it's this reputation that draws not only tourists to come back, but also things like investment from companies. Um, also, um, for example, film companies to want to come back and film over here. All of these positive things come from Barcelona's and in general cities, um, their influence online. A lot of this might have come from the Olympics, the 92 Olympics, but increasingly you're finding things like um, the Mobile World Congress, um, Barcelona FC, um, Barcel the, the architecture, the, um, even the numbers of young people who are from, I don't know, 18 to maybe 31 that come here for work and have a very good time here. Um, all of these factors contribute to this amazing reputation that Barcelona has and, and enjoys and actually can build on to having that, in, that reputation as a world-class city. I think from my perspective for, for international relations, my background is in, is in digital international relations. That's what I'm very much interested in. So how does, <clears throat> how does international relations work in the digital age? Um, and that, that's really my thing. And I think for my part, International relations is, is so valuable and just such a crucial subject to be able to understand and to study in the 21st century, understanding how the world works and how it's going to work in this digital age, how, how politics 
and, and the net essentially come together is basically where um, it's going to be how the United Nations is going to work. It's going to be how NATO and now the European Union are going to work in the future. And it's this understanding of future trends in international politics that I'm trying to give to my students to get them to understand how, how life, how society and how politics is going to be lived in the 21st century. And this is the thing that I'm hoping that they receive from me and I hope that that's what they're excited by.